external tables have this one advantage where you can actually have more flexibility than what the SQL language offers you. Let me explain. It's been long documented that the fundamental benefit of external tables over SQL Loader is the power of SQL. With SQL Loader, there's obviously a little bit of flexibility when it comes to using things like the when condition, etc., to customize the incoming format into a target table. But obviously, you get nothing even remotely close to the power of SQL. However, I'd like to talk about external tables not in, part, in relation to the flexibility of SQL because that, believe it or not, is underselling the abilities of external tables because external tables have this one advantage where you can actually have more flexibility than what the SQL language offers you. Let me explain. This is the thing that, that probably drives external table adoption. Here I have an external table called external underscore emp. It's just reading from, say, a CSV file. But obviously with SQL Loader, normally you'll just have to load that data in. An external table lets you do things like aggregations, group buys, et cetera. And that's all part of the wow factor of external tables. But when I say we can do even more than what conventional SQL would allow, let's explore an option here. Let's assume we wanna query the database alert log. That's a nice example of a external file source that we might want to query inside the database. Now, a quick segue first. This is used to be a, a classic external table example. You know, you wanted to give an example that everyone could do. The alert logs on every single database, therefore we will do it. However, you should not query the alert log with an external table, even though that's the demo we're about to do. Let me explain why. In all the recent versions of the Oracle database, we already give you a query that lets you query the alert log. In fact, you can see it's v$diag alert external. We've now exposed the alert log via a VDOL of view. This is critical, obviously, for those environments where you don't have operating system access, uh, things like cloud environments, etc. The ability to query the alert log is critical to DBAs. Therefore, we've exposed it via a VDOL of view. And you can see all the columns are in there. All the parsing has been done for you. It's actually more than an external table because if you run this query, for example, inside a pluggable database, then you'll only see the alert log entries that pertain to that pluggable database. So it's it's not just a internal external an external ex, internal external table. It's not just an external table under the covers. It's more than that to do all the appropriate parsing and control access via the appropriate level of privileges. So you wouldn't ever build an external table to query the alert log. I'm gonna do it now just to demonstrate some points. First, obviously I need a directory that points to where my table is. So I've just pointed it to my 19C trace directory here sitting under the Diag destination. Then I would create my alert log table. Now, as we know, inside the alert log, it's just one line for each log entry and it can be anything, any piece of text. So my first attempt here would be something like this, create a table called external alert. It's got a single column varchar to 4000. Uh, in later versions of the database, I could make it varchar to 32k, just in case things get really wide. But I think there's probably not many alert messages in there in the alert log that are greater than 4k in width anyway. And then the rest is pretty much the same. Because it's just a single column with the entire text, I don't need any particular parsing in there. I've simply got delimited my new line to make sure that each row is a, a new row or each line is a new row. And then just text from one to 4000. So very, very simple, and the location is the name of my alert log. Even just like that, I've got something useful now. Whereas I used to have to log on to the operating system and have a look through the alert log, now I can just query it with a simple query. Of course, inside the alert log is a lot of stuff, and the vast majority of it is just for information purposes. The name alert log perhaps is now a misnomer from bygone days. It's a lot of information now that might be useful, but the vast majority of it can simply be bypassed. So how do I dig into things of interest? In fact, if I look in my alert log, I've just grabbed some random snippets here from my alert log to see what we've got. And I might be interested in warnings, warnings that say, in this case, my uh, virtual timer is um, drifting slightly. My poor machine's probably running too hot. 
or I might obviously be interested in Aura 600s or any kind of Aura error that f makes its way into the alert log. Generally, if an Aura error gets in there, it's something that's probably worthy of note. I might be interested when my temporary table space resizes. Someone's been running a big query that had to do some big sorting. I might be interested in file resize operations, et cetera, et cetera. I might be interested in pluggable database violations or Every time I start the database, one of the cool things that came along, I think probably about Oracle 12.2 timeframe, is we dump what patches have been applied. So they're always in the alert log every time you start up. So all those things are things that are sort of of interest that I'd like to extract out of my alert log. And if I just have a single text column, then what I'm doing is writing a lot of text parsing. I'm doing substrings and instrings and regular expressions and all sorts of things because I've just got the one column which is 4,000 characters long. Doesn't seem to be any way I can avoid that. This is what I mean by external tables having even more flexibility than conventional SQL. A normal table has columns and you simply nominate where the data will sit in those columns. In an external table, those columns can be anywhere. They can even overlap. So I start with my text column of just 4,000 characters and I'll keep that such that I can get the whole row should I want it. But if I dig into some of those things of interest that I was looking at before, if it's a warning, then the first, what's that? The first eight characters, I think, is the word warning. So I can actually have a column called warning, which is just the first eight characters. Even though I've already got a column called text, which is the first 4,000, I can explicitly say, I want a column called warning, which is just the first eight. If I get aura errors, then it's going to be the first nine characters of interest. So I'll have a column called aura error. There's overlap in there, but it doesn't matter. I'll only want to reference those columns under particular circumstances, but we'll get to that later on. For patches, I'll have a couple of columns looking for the word patch and the patch ID, which starts at character 11, should the first 10 characters be the name patch. And finally, if I'm getting resize operations, similarly, I can add some information there. So I've got the resize indicator from characters one to six. If the first six characters are resize, then characters 35 to 39 are probably going to contain me the file number. That's probably large enough unless I get to tens of thousands of data files, at which point I've probably got other things to worry about in this database. And also the thing that probably interests me most in any alert log entry is the timestamp, which is going to be the first 32 characters. You can see there on the first row on the text file there. That gives me an external table that now looks something like this. I've picked some other columns as well, but you can see you've got text, warning, aura error, patch, timestamp, violations, etc. And all they are is different offsets in the same row for the external file. But now that I can reference those elements, I don't have to worry about things like substring and instring, etc. I can say, for example, when patch, which happens to be the first eight characters, when patch equals patch ID, then I know I can reference the patch ID column. That's going to contain useful information. When the timestamp column starts with, say, 20, let's assume this database isn't going to last up until the year 2100. When it starts with 20, followed by a couple of wild characters, then a dash, then more wild characters, I could tighten this up if I wanted to. Then I can safely run a two timestamp on there. I know that the timestamp in the alert log is always YYYMMDD, etc. So I can use the appropriate format mask and that's going to give me a timestamp. Similarly for a resize, if the resize column, which is just the first six bytes, equals the word resize, then I know that the resize file will be out around byte 37 somewhere. I can trim off any trailing commas and I'm good to go. Add the appropriate word clause. I can use a lag function using ignore nulls that will continue to hold the last timestamp encountered all the way down through the file. Add a few where clauses in, and there you go. I've got a timestamp for every single row, and I've got information populated as I see fit. I've got the patch IDs, when I had some Oracle errors, and when I had some file size resizes, etc. Obviously, as I stressed before, it's not as good as the real external table alert log we have, but this is more just an example of when you want to bring structure to a file in which there actually isn't much structure there. The alert log is a free format kind of file nowadays, but we saw it as an example here. You can actually apply structure by digging into various components. This is just the tip of the iceberg because I didn't even use some of the functions I could use inside the external table definition. 
I could, for example, use regular expressions, L trim, R trim, et cetera, to go parsing the information inside the external table DDL. And then after that, it would be even easier to extract value data of interest from my file. So external tables can be very, very useful in terms of building some structure around data where there actually isn't much structure in the file. That's why I claim it's actually more powerful than actually just SQL itself.